Why don't you play a short tune so people can hear? Oh wow! My nice students Should can I? hear. Oh my yeah. goodness! Um, I can hear one of well, your, what you, you know, do. Of course, the whole thing with Shore was to have a nice band behind you, playing that groovy, that groovy groove. Yeah. Um, but I've recently worked up a little piece of something. Um, it's called Mumarando. It's one of uh, one that I'm sure Jacob de Bandoline recorded. And, I, and I'm attempting to, to play um, melody and harmony for myself uh -huh. to try and create a solo version of this. Um, and what so, is this music? What is the what is the choro? What choro is Brazilian choro music is, of course, um, the mandolin played a gigantic role in this in this music in Brazil. Of course, a lot of Italian immigrants came there with their mandolins at the turn of the 20th century and. Uh, incorporated their melodies with the Afro-Brazilian rhythms that were happening mm -hmm. and created something very similar to uh, like string swing or bluegrass really. I, I see a lot of connections mm -hmm. but of course harmonically it's closer to jazz with uh, with lots of two five ones leading you to different keys and things. Right. And I just fell madly in love with that style. Um, there's a great mandolinist, Jacob de Bandolim, who um, was kind of the Bill Monroe type figure who wrote lots of the material and recorded many great CDs through the 50s, 60s. And, um, and so he, his, his body of work, as well as a couple other composers, Pichanguinha is one, um, and who was uh, a great flute player and, and saxophone player and pianist, and he, and he wrote, um, I mean, I'd, I'd put him in the category with Duke Ellington in terms of just the body of music that he gave to Brazil. Right. And he's revered in that same kind of way in the culture. Yeah. And so it's a beautiful instrumental form. And when you go there, you see it in the cafes and different little little clubs. It's, in his home. Yeah. Yeah. And jam sessions in people's homes and whatnot. But it's it's a, the style that the hot musicians of Brazil would play. I mean, they're considered the the, the good pickers. And it's still going on. It's, it's still lively. And yeah. I mean, and, and it has many different forms now because you have older guys who play in the really traditional style, much like you would in the bluegrass today. Right. And then you have young guys who are writing their own music and mixing it with American jazz and, and other things that they're coming in contact with. So it's very vibrant and alive and has a long tradition in that way. Right. So uh, I, I was shocked the first time I went to Brazil and and had this kind of blasted at me. Yeah. I had guys who were bringing me around to clubs where they knew the, the great players were playing and, and uh, throw me to the wolves. Yeah, yeah. Here, jam, yeah, jam with jam these out. guys. Yeah. <laughs> 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 these, guys, these guys have been playing this stuff since they were three years old. You know, yeah, yeah. With granddad out back. Right, right. Okay, you American, let's see what you <laughs> got for us. <laughs> They play Roanoke, why don't you? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Well, of course. They love when I play bluegrass, you yeah. know, and they jam along. I mean, these guys can hear chords. Yeah, yeah. And there's something about the culture of that of that uh, music-making world, because it's mostly an oral tradition. I, I can only compare it to maybe early days of jazz in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. when guys were just showing each other how music worked in a very immediate kind of way, just passing it on. Like, What's yeah. that chord? I don't know. It's this shape and then that shape. Yeah. All these guys don't even know the names of things. But Just doing it. Good Lord, can they do it. Yeah. yeah. Is, there, is there one tune that's sort of like you know, the Foggy Mountain Breakdown or something like that? Of well, yeah. Music? Well, the one that ever, all Americans know and some of my students have sent me is Tico Tico. It's the oh, one oh. tune that made it up here. Uh -huh. It was okay. Carmen Miranda's big hit. Yeah. And, but it, originally it was an instrumental that she or somebody she knew wrote lyrics to it. Right. Um, and... When she came to America and toured, when, the, when was it, the 40s or something? Probably she around that, yeah. Hit, she brought her own band up. The producers in L.A., or the TV producers said, oh, we'll find you a bunch of cats in L.A. She no. said, no, no, no. <laughs> you don't understand. Boys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these guys could really play short. They were the, they call them a regional. It's, a, it's like a little ensemble yeah, yeah. that would back up a singer or an accordionist or a mandolinist or a flute player, whoever would come into the radio station. They were like little radio uh, backup bands. Right. And they, they could play all of the music, the, 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 their culture, in any, in any key. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had to have those kind of chops. Yeah, and they were amazing. <laughs> right. So, so they, she brought these guys up, and, um, and they, they made that the big hit. You play it?
floundering. I know it in my head. I love this. If somebody needs to invent like the banjo roll that goes with sharp, right? I threw that crazy <laughs> Celtic tune at you, and now you're throwing me Tico Tico. <laughs> As it should be. It all comes around, yeah. You kept smiling. That's the yeah, most You just keep smiling. I don't well, care. Well, you know. Of left and right. But you should right. go down there. Have you ever been? I've never been down. I've been to Argentina. Okay. So, so you got the, I got the tango, the tango thing going thing? on. The tango going on. How was that? Uh, we just went to one club. There was some amazing dancing going, a great band, but you know, okay. I, I didn't immerse and, myself in the tango culture down play there. With any the new tango. Bandonion. Uh, no, I didn't really see a whole lot of that because we were with my wife's family who lives down there. And so we were mostly with family the whole time. Like yeah, yeah, every yeah. single person had to have you at their home oh, geez. for dinner. And it was <laughs> nice. great. It was amazing. It's like this Italian Argentine kind of thing. Ooh. But I didn't get out and hear a whole lot of music. But amazing. we did we did go to one. Amazing place. how many Italians went to these. Oh, places. big time, yeah. So All the banjo would work in Shoro, as you have just proven. Yeah, I guess. You know. They even use four string banjos. So. Did they? Yeah. And and hence the mandolin players would of course play those instruments tuned in fifths like they were. They even had a, like a tenor guitar, like a dobro tenor guitar that they used. I don't know uh, who was making them, but had a, had some kind of metal face. You know, again, the issue of volume and right. once bands got cutting through a band. Yeah. 